Dr. Lori, you, you testified, and it's in your written testimony, uh, that we are better prepared than ever and that you have a comprehensive response on the ground. Uh, on the other hand, Mr. Roth, our Inspector General, uh, you were commenting how the, the analysis uh, uh, done by, I think you were talking about DHS in your testimony, how the equipment purchases are, are not adequate, uh, in, in some cases the wrong equipment, in other cases the usefulness of the equipment or drugs beyond the expiration date. Uh, Dr. Laurie, you testify that you have a very aggressive system in place. And on the other hand, uh, President Berger from uh, National Nurses United uh, says that uh, they've done a survey. They've done a survey of, of 3,000 nurses uh, from every state in the Union and, and the District of Columbia. And 85% of those nurses say that they have not been trained to deal with Ebola and that preparedness is, and this is a quote, woefully insufficient and dangerously inadequate. So, those are two different stories of what's going on here. And uh, now I understand we don't want to panic people, but we also don't need happy talk in terms of what we're, we're dealing with. And maybe it's just me, but lately when a government agency comes before this committee especially, and tells me there's nothing to worry about, and we got this, that's when I start to worry. Now, as who to believe, I, I think the nurses, and I, I know I got some nurses here from the Massachusetts uh, Nurses Association as well, I know how they work. They're on the ground. They are our front lines on, on the, in this battle against Ebola. They are our ground troops. They are the people that are doing this work every day. They're exposing themselves and perhaps their families, perhaps their families, if, if things go wrong, if they don't have the adequate equipment. So when they tell me that, that they're not prepared, I tend to believe them. I think those are facts. Those are facts. And uh, we need to make sure that, that we get them the equipment and the training that need to protect themselves and to protect our communities and to protect their own families. There are a couple of facts that we've gotten in, in the briefings from, from the various panelists. Uh, one fact uh, is that the C CDC estimates that by this January, there'll be up to 1.2 million people in West Africa afflicted with Ebola. 1.2 million. The, the, the estimate by DOD is 1.2 million. 1.2 million in January. Now, they were done at different times, so the difference might be just the, the period of time that they were, they were taken, if, if things go as they are right now. 1.4 million. So we've got a, a, a real and present danger to the people of West Africa and to the people of the United States, who I'm pledged to protect. Now, I understand that the current approach is to use what they call a, a post-arrival uh, approach so that we're going we're gonna to have these hospitals and that as people arrive from West Africa, we're going to begin an, an analysis and, and a quarantine and checking them uh, and making sure that they're, they're not, they're not uh, carrying Ebola. But it seems to me, and, and I listened, and, and Mr. Torbay, you've, you've given some very powerful testimony, a lot of it written, quite frankly, uh, and, and you haven't had a chance to talk about it, but you were saying that the focus should be on West Africa. And what we're setting up here right now with this post-arrival in the U.S. approach is we're, we're going to set up these hospitals, all this equipment, everything here in the United States, and wait for those folks to arrive. And, and I believe that we should be doing just the opposite. Well, we should be doing that, but we should also be doing something else. And that is pre-departure. Pre-departure. We, we know that we're, we're about to have 1.2, 1.4 million people in West Africa afflicted with Ebola. We ought to be on the ground there. We ought to have, instead of the, the restriction here in the United States after they come in of 21 days, there should be a 21-day uh, pre-approval. When they, when they say they want to travel to the United States, 20, 
they need to they need to present themselves and report in person 21 days before they get on that plane and we can take their temperature and, and, a, and a blood sample if necessary so that when it 21 days later when they when they appear to travel we can test them again now we've got two contact points on that person before they fly to the US and we can we can also do that post arrival uh, check as well but we we are not taking this seriously enough. We are not. And, uh, you know, we need to help, uh, you know, our brothers and sisters in West Africa, absolutely. But we've got we've to use, we've got to have a fact-based approach to this. This can't be just about ideology and happy talk.